Welcome to the wood shop today. Steve here. Today, we're going to build this potato box. A simple little project. All you're going to need is five 2x6s, a couple screws, some tools, and the project is actually quite simple. Basically, construction is just a couple of uh, notches here. So these are just kind of half lap notches. And a couple cleats. Basically, it fits together like this. So you, the whole idea here is start out with one layer, fill it with dirt, start your potato plant. When it gets up a little higher, you put on another layer, fill it with dirt, and so and so. And then you get to the top, your potatoes way up here, and then the potatoes can grow this whole depth here. Now, I've tried similar things, but I've never tried anything like this. So it'll be interesting to see how it works. Building this one for a friend. Uh, I'm not going to take credit for the design of it, just hold on. The design of it came out of this Raised Bed Revolution book from uh, Tara Nolan. It's got some pretty good little uh, projects in here. And didn't modify it, basically kept it to, to the plan that was in the book. And uh, it seems to be well thought out, so I think if it's going to work, it's going to work. Now, the only thing that we did do a little different is we went with the regular 2x6s spruce or pine. Uh, we wanted to go with cedar but in these COVID times cedar for a 2x6 where I'm from a 2x6 8 foot cedar is about $33 so that would make this project very very expensive. So we went with the uh, 2x6 spruce and pine that is only $11 a board and makes it a little bit more economical. The cedar will last a little longer, that's for sure, but it's a potato box. Don't need to be spending $175 on materials. Anyway, simple project, follow along. I'm going to give you a step by step, and uh, if you're one of those green thumbs, give it a whirl. Kind of excited to see what fall is going to bring. All right. We're going to get started with these uh, potato boxes. Now the plan that calls for 29 and a half inch length in length. So we're going to stack it four tall, so we're going to need 16 of them. So I'm going to get cut on these, and I'm going to have the, it won't be talking because I'm going to have the uh, vacuum on. i got it hooked up to my saw to keep dust down. So I'm going to cut these to length, and then we go on to step number two. Step two. Now, you're going to need a little square. Now, what we're going to do next is we have to cut a notch, a half lap notch, 
in here, so it's going to look like that. And then it'll go into the corresponding half lap notch on this one and basically give us our joint. Now, that sounds like a simple thing to do. If these were made out of 2x4s, it'd be really, really easy to do. But they're not. They're 2x6. I'm going to draw them out and then I'm going to show you why they are a little bit difficult to cut. Well, there, you know, there is a method of doing it, but it just, there's less methods of doing it. So let's measure it out. So two inches from the end, and then we're going to make our notch one and nine sixteenths wide. I know that these are only an inch and a half, but they do have a bit of a bow to them. So that one and nine sixteenths, that extra sixteenth of an inch, gives you a little play. Remember, we're not building a piece of furniture here. We want it to go together easy, and it's just going to sit on top of each other. It's not going anywhere. All right, let's mark this out. So I'll take my square. Go up a little bit. I want to go halfway. So these are five and a half. That's actually a little less than five and a half. I wonder where we're at here. Majority are five and a half. So we're going to go two and three quarters. Because that's halfway. And then we're just going to make a, a mark at the top. And uh, this is just for a certain method I'm going to show you. And then this is actually going to be our ruler here. So instead of measuring every one, I'm just going to put a few up at a time. Now I'm going to watch what I'm doing here. This one here, I think I'm going to be okay. If there was a knot or something in the way, you want to make sure that you line it up so that they're, uh, it's not going to be an issue for you. I don't know how big my uh, square is, if it's going to make it or not. Oh, yeah. So then we're just going to make sure that we're lined up here. And then we'll basically just use the uh, square and make our marks. So I'm just going to mark out a few at a time. It'll break up the monotony so I'm not doing the same thing over and over again. Keep me saner. So we have to cut halfway up this 2x6 here. Now, if you have a you know a nice large table saw, that's not a big deal because your blade will actually come up far enough. But on my little table saw, the blade does not come up far enough to make this cut. And same with the skill saw. The skill saw blade even all the way up does not cut far enough to do this. Now I could use my skill saw and cut this way 
but because I'm, I'm, I've got a, a cut that's curved, I'm going to have to finish it off with a jigsaw or a handsaw. Or we can just use a jigsaw or use a handsaw. Now I'm going to show you both methods. Now there's some benefits to a jigsaw. It's maybe a little bit quicker, but there's some disadvantages. Now if you use a jigsaw enough, you realize that it always wants to cut a little bit on an angle. Now you can try and adjust for that if you have got a lot of projects, but the best thing that you can do is buy the best blade you can, nice and coarse, and if you go nice and easy, let the jigsaw do the work, you can cut a pretty straight cut. But it will splay one way or the other a little bit. So you may have to do a little bit of cleanup. Or we can do it with that handsaw, if that's what you have. I'm going to give you a couple different methods because not everybody has got a wonderful shop set up and can do unlimited projects. All right, we're going to start with the jigsaw first. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to cut. Alright, method one, we're going to use the uh, jigsaw and as you can see here, I've got a fairly coarse blade on and just want to take my time. If you just let the, the blade do its work, you'll get a nice straight cut. If you're always pushing in a big hurry, that's when you end up in trouble. Sorry about getting in the way there, but I'm pretty happy with that. I got uh, this this cut here. It's a little bit out. So what I'm going to do is take my jigsaw. I'm just going to angle it a little bit. Looks better. All right, I'm going to cut a couple more of these and we're going to see how they flange up. here. So basically it didn't take very much work or effort to, to cut those. So basically that's how it goes. So then you just keep building and pretty soon you got yourself a potato box. Let's see how this side fits here. Wonder bar. I like it. Hey, I'm happy with that. Fairly level. Alright, that's two. I got lots more to cut. But I'm going to take you over to the vise and show you another method.
Nowadays, most people don't recognize what this is, but it's actually just a little handsaw. Now, if you haven't got any of the fancy equipment, you can get by with this. All right. Now, there are some methods to using one of these. You just don't start wheeling and expect it to work properly. When you're cutting with a handsaw, the tendency, gravity pulls you straight down. So if you got your wood on an angle, chances are you're going to have to fight it all the way to get that cut to work straight. So, level your piece of wood. Clamp her down good. Now, you want to just use your finger just to kind of get it started. Just put it there and just drag your saw. That's why we have the lines going across the top. And then it's just a simple matter. Once again, don't force it. Let the saw do the work. but this will actually give you a straighter cut than your jigsaw will. The yarn gets sore though. Now, I know this for me is not my preferred method, but let me get my pencil here. I'm just going to mark two and three quarters here. If you haven't got a uh, jigsaw, I still prefer finishing it with a jigsaw. And I probably will do, because I need the exercise, I'll probably cut half with the handsaw and then use the jigsaw for the rest. We'll see what happens. But, most people have a chisel, most people have a hammer. So what you can do is just knock it out with the chisel. Now go on the back side, mark it out. Just kind of give it a little bit of a tap so that we've got a mark. Go down a little ways. So this is old school woodworking. Now you got to be careful when you're hammering. You can break this end off. That's the only disadvantage of using a chisel. And then you got to go down and pick up another piece of wood. And then you can just tap it out. Just like that. Okay? Wasn't too tough. Now you may end up having to go in there and just clean it up a little bit with your chisel. This is where it really pays to have a nice sharp chisel. But if you are cleaning it up like this, flip it over so you don't uh, blow everything out the one end there. Put 
turned out pretty good. That's going to work just fine and dandy. So, if you haven't got the fancy stuff, use the simple stuff. I'm going to use the jigsaw on this one. Sorry. Make sure you check each one. That one works perfectly. All right, that's three. That means I got uh, 13 more to go. Now, this isn't the most exciting thing in the world. I'll get those uh, 13 done and then uh, we'll get back to you. One advantage of using uh, you know, your first board that you measured out to, to make your marks is every board will be the same. If you cut this one, maybe just a hair long or hair short by accident, when you use this board this distance, the important one in the middle will always be the same. And if it hangs out a little farther or a little less, it doesn't really matter. Important measurement is what's in between. So if you use just the one here as a rule, then you're good. up got them all cut and sometimes one's a little tighter than the other so you can clean it up with a rasp or do a little tuning with your jigsaw now once I've got them all kind of figured and they all go together and slip together really nice I'm gonna mark them so that one goes with one two goes with two you know what I mean are actually going to be on the inside so I know it goes together hard to do that over here there we go There, so when you're putting it together at the beginning of the year, you know which ones fit nice because they've been fitted together. Okay, I've got a couple more to do, and then we've got to build a cleat that goes, I'll show you, right here, so that when you put it in, it's going to stay nice and true to the next one, so it's not going to be sliding all over the place.
Now I'm just cutting these little uh, two by twos that I cut five inches long here. I'm going to drill a couple holes. You want to make sure you do drill a pilot hole so you don't split it. And then that is going to get screwed on right here. So basically just even with this right on the very edge. And that's going to keep the boxes from sliding all over the place. Just like that. Pretty simple. See now, we can really see it coming together. Just like that. One more to go. Alright, we got the last one finished. I think we got ourselves a potato box. Just going to use the sander, clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit more presentable, and we're ready for some dirt. It's warm weather and a couple potatoes. So if this is a project that you want to try, it's a very simple project. Uh, minimal tools. Don't be afraid. Have at it.